Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Library Marketing Show. I'm your host, Angela Hirsch, the founder and curator of superlibrarymarketing.com, the website where you can get all kinds of tips, tricks, and strategies for library marketing. This is the weekly show that helps you to do your library marketing better. Before we get started, I wanna ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm not one of those cool kids who like, is all like, like, share, subscribe, but I have found out that I can do a lot of really cool things with my YouTube channel that'll help you with your library marketing, but I have to get to a certain number of subscribers, subscribers, which is a hard word to say. So click subscribe and help me out. All right, we're gonna get into the video. We're gonna start with library news. Then we're gonna go to a reader question from superlibrarymarketing.com. And finally, kudos to a library doing amazing things. So I wanna get started this week with our news with a website that I found that I'm having a really difficult time not looking at today. And it is from, I have to read off my notes, the International Federation of Library Associations and Institutions, or IFLA. It is an idea board. Basically, you go on there and you can read ideas about libraries and library marketing from other libraries across the country and across the world. I'm not kidding, it's global and it is the coolest thing. It's populated with a whole bunch of ideas already and you can filter it by region, by country, by professional affiliation, and by category. So there is a promotional and campaign category. There's also like a toolkit category and a measurement and analysis category. And some of the ideas I found in those categories, someone was asking, why don't we create a code of ethics for social media? Another person was talking about how to market their library as a safe space. Another person was talking about how to market the library profession as a profession of peace the possibilities of how to use this are endless. So I'll put a link in the show notes. I think it's an amazing thing. You should check it out. You should bookmark it. You should share it with everybody who works at your library, the IFLA idea board. All right, now on to our reader question. And it comes this week from Lee, my friend at the Pikes Peak Library in Colorado. And Lee is asking about one of my favorite things to talk about. She wants to talk about email marketing, specifically how to convince the powers that be that email marketing is the best thing ever, because it is. She wants to tell them that email is not dead, that ROI is high, that um, the automatic opt-in upon signing up for a card is a thing, all of the great stuff that I will normally talk about. So I could talk about this for half an hour, but I'm gonna hit on the highlights. First of all, a couple of months ago, I wrote a blog post about how to convince your senior leaders to do something in marketing, I will put that in the show notes for this episode. So that'll help you with that section. Second, if you want to play this video for your senior leaders, here's my personal message to them. Email marketing is not dead, especially for libraries. Our cardholders want to hear from us. They want our stuff. So a couple of things. Number one, I know a lot of libraries get nervous about the automatic opt-in for emails. But here's the thing. If you sign people up right away when they get a new card, you can do two things. The first thing is you can create a new card holder drip campaign, which basically means you're emailing your new card holders every couple of weeks to tell them about the things that your library can do. You wanna do this so that you can introduce them to all the great services at the library without overwhelming them. Cause you know, we have a lot of stuff that people can use. And if you try to tell a new card holder all of the things right off the top of the bat uh, of when they've signed up for a card, they're gonna get overwhelmed and they're gonna shut down. So a new card holder campaign can help you to educate your card holders at a rate that they can um, be comfortable with. Second thing is when you opt in, then when they start using their card, you should change and put your card holders into clusters based on how they use their card, if you can. Now my library uses Savannah by Orange Boy, which is a great, um, I don't, <laughs> I'm always plugging for them, but it's a great tool. It's also kind of expensive. You can do clustering with MailChimp. Uh, I believe there's some clustering options with Biblio Commons. Constant Contact, I think, has clustering. Um, there are a lot of companies out there that can help you do segmentation. And the thing you wanna do with segmentation is to make sure you're sending your card holders targeted messages based on their interests. So a lot of libraries like to send an all card holder email because they get nervous that there's gonna be somebody out there that doesn't get the email that might want the information or need the information and they won't see it. 
and I totally understand that. But you can do that same thing with targeted emails and you can actually send uh, more emails to specific targets and get a better engagement rate. And that's not just opens, that's when people click on links and take action because of an email. That's really what you want. I call it conversion, when people click on an email and take an action. So and when you're doing segments, that helps your cardholders and it helps you to communicate with them in a more direct way, in a way that they are interested in. Uh, I'm a big fan of uh, the opt-in when people sign up for a library card. I think a person should have to opt out of email. I think, no, I know for a fact that people expect us to communicate with them. They expect emails. They're cool with emails coming from companies. They're really, really cool with emails coming from libraries because we've got stuff that they want and we're free. So don't be afraid to ask for emails from your new card holders and to send them emails. I'm not bragging. I'm just using this as an example. Last week, I realized that I sent three card, three messages to one cluster of my card holders three days in a row. So Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they got an email message from me. This is like 10, 12,000 people. My unsubscribe rate was 0% on Monday, on Tuesday, and on Wednesday. And that's because each of those messages contained something that that particular cluster wanted to hear. So as long as you're delivering something they want to hear, they're not gonna unsubscribe. You're not gonna be spammed to them. You're gonna get high returns and high ROI. I have a ton of tips and strategies about email marketing at superlibrarymarketing.com. Please go there, just search email marketing and you will probably lose your mind at the number of articles that are there. I'm also going to be talking about email marketing at the Ohio Library Conference at the end of September. If you're interested in that, please sign up. There's a registration link on superlibrarymarketing.com in upcoming events. Thanks for your question, Lee. I appreciate it. We'll be talking more about email marketing because like I said, I love it on the blog and here in the show. Thanks, Lee. Okay, finally, our kudos, which go out this week to the Tulsa Library. So I'm a member of the Urban Library Council Marketing Committee and a few weeks, it might have even just been a week ago, we were talking about ways that we uh, show the library's value to our card holders. And so people started to share um, videos and other promotional things that they had created for their libraries to show their value. And in particular, I loved this video. I think it's called the My Neighborhood Library video from the Tulsa Public Library. It was emotional, it was well-produced, it had energy, it made me want to move to Tulsa. And I thought that they did just a remarkable job with this video, just like creating this homey feeling of how their library sits in their community, the value that they give to their neighborhoods, and um, what an integral part the Tulsa Public Library is to that city. So I wanna give kudos to Tulsa because I think that video was amazing. High five, y'all. Okay, that's it for this week's Library Marketing Show. I'll be back next week with more tips, trips, tricks, and strategies. Please like, share, subscribe on my YouTube channel and uh, go to library, superlibrarymarketing.com to send me a question if you wanna have a question on an upcoming show. Thanks, I'll see you next week.